Good morning to you all, and welcome to the fifth edition of the Harvard MIT Colombian Conference, Colombia 2040. My name is Diana Costa. I'm a PhD student at Harvard, and I'm a fellow at the Edmund J. Saffer Center for Ethics. On behalf of the organizing committee, I can say we are delighted to have you here. We want to thank our speakers, supporters, and audience, especially those of you who have traveled to attend this event, and those who are joining us through our live stream. For being part of what we expect to be an exciting series of conversations about Colombia, we look forward to two days of rich debates and productive encounters. This, this event continues a tradition established over the past 20 years by the founders of the Colombian Student Society and the Colombian Student Association at MIT to dedicate a few days each year to think about Colombia, to debate on the challenges we face, and to envision a better country, the country we want to live in. In past years, student organizations from these universities have joined forces with other students from Tufts University, Berkeley, Boston University, and other institutions to constitute an academic space where Columbia takes the central stage. Through this event, the student organizations have sought to consolidate bonds among Colombians within and beyond academic institutions, aiming to reach out to the broader Colombian community in Massachusetts. We open channels of communication to enable collaborative exchanges and to convey an image of Colombia that captures the richness and diversity of our country. We provided platforms for voices that are rarely heard in the national public debate and attempted to enhance the influence of grassroots activists. We projected the country through the lens of photography, poetry, art, and illustration. And we started dialogues that promoted empathy for the past and present experiences of the main stakeholders in the peace-building process. In this edition of the conference, a team of students from Harvard, MIT, Northeastern University, and the Universidad del Rosario invited some of the most prominent minds in Colombia to look ahead and collectively think about our future. We hope to use this time to reflect on the various capabilities we have to build a more inclusive, democratic, and competitive country. The prospect of peace brings along the possibility of economic growth for historically marginalized regions. Combined with innovative educational strategies, this development can reduce inequality and bridge gaps between urban and rural areas. Awareness of the challenges faced by media and journalists to cover events in the vast majority of the national territory can help us understand what must be done to give a voice to those parts of the country that remain silent. Likewise, strengthening Colombia's potential in research and development and enhancing the employment of evidence-based policies can contribute to successfully tackle wide-ranging problems like violence, public health, and climate change. To discuss these opportunities and the challenges they create, we brought together researchers and leaders in the areas of environmental stewardship, innovation, education, economic development, philanthropy, journalism, public health, and human rights advocacy. Our hope is that we can all leave this conference with sharper insights and innovative proposals to confront these and other challenges over the course of the next 20 years. For some, those challenges are occurring today. We are currently witnessing how the project of building peace throughout the national territory creates new difficulties that require adaptive thinking and the concerted efforts of authorities and stakeholders. The most acute of these are now being addressed by some of our guests who are not able to join us today. And although we regret their absence, we are grateful for their service to the country. The challenges faced in the implementation of the Peace Accord, the achievements made so far, and the opportunities it has created will occupy the first sessions of the conference and will serve as a frame and point of reference for subsequent conversations. We invite everybody here to listen and learn, to raise questions and propose solutions, to develop productive connections and to help us think how we can collaborate to create a better Colombia for 2040. We want to encourage you to use our Twitter handle, at Colombian Conference, and hashtag C2040, to comment on our event and raise questions for our panelists. We also encourage you to use our LinkedIn page to connect with other conference attendants. Lastly, we want to thank the Harvard Columbian Student Society, the Columbian Student Association at MIT, and the David Rockefeller Center for their support in organizing this event throughout this and past years. We want to thank the group of Latin American consuls for being here with us, in particular, the Colombian consul Gida Jimena Mora, for all her contributions to this project. 
We want to thank all of our supporters, in particular, Avianca, the Boston Consulting Group, La Fundación para la Libertad de Prensa, APN Education Ventures, KPMG, Colombia in Peace, Promigas, La Universidad Externado de Colombia, the Harvard Law School, FESCOL, the Harvard School of Public Health, CONFAMA, the Project Drawdown, the MIT J. Well Initiative, and the MIT Legatum Center for Entrepreneurship, among all, the, among all the other people who have made this event possible. Personally, I would like to thank the organizer committee for a year of hard work. It's been a great pleasure to see this vision take shape through the joint efforts of such a diverse, dedicated, and resourceful team. Thank you. Our first speaker was unable to join us today. He was kind enough, however, to video record his remarks, which you will see momentarily. Vice President Oscar Naranjo assumed office in 2017, being the first former, former police officer to occupy this post. He previously served as a member of the government team that negotiated the peace accord with the FARC and was counselor to the president for the post-conflict. Vice President Naranjo served as the head of the National Police Force between 2007 and 2012 and was elected world's best policeman in 2010. On that same year, he was promoted to four-star general, the only police officer to hold that rank in the country. Please join me in welcoming the Vice President and all of our speakers.